Have you ever been to Kirkham? Twinned with Ancigny and not good Brokenau, bad Brokenau. What a cool house, huh? Is this a Smurfs house, a lighthouse, an Oast house, a windmill house? Don't know, but it's very cool. Okay, kids, can you guess where we are today? We are in bed and breakfast land. We are in guest house land. That is Blackpool. Now, I'm not gonna do the reveal just yet because every Charlie Veach walk and talk starts with a lament. And lament is the right word of the immediate city centers turning into uh, giant Stalinist boxes. And this one, not only is it a Stalinist giant box, it's that with a 200 year old company that's just gone bust. Great reset, here we come. Guest house, guest house, guest house. Oh, Chaplin's Hotel, that'd be a good place for Charlie to stay, but guess what? If they've not all gone bust, no, they've, they've all gone bust, let's be honest. They've all gone bust, it's all finished. And here on peut voir la Tour Eiffel. C'est désigné dans l'année uh, 1828. Gotta be very careful in Blackpool with the parking. There's no free parking. And uh, it's a Sunday. There's other people doing the same infraction that I am. We'll see. It is so cold. There's another beast from the east and I'm by the seaside. I think it's one degree Celsius, but with the wind chill, it's, it's cold. Oh, there's seagull noises. That's how you know you are beside the seaside. Okay, last traffic warden check. I'm gonna go for it, guys. Let me have a look at the time. Wait, hold on. So, down south, you've got Brighton. In the northeast of America, you got Coney Island. And here you've got Blackpool. Are you from Blackpool? No. No? Are you from Coney Island? Good man. Fucking bullshitter. Anyway. They've blown up the bridge over the River Kwai again. Well, let's keep on going around. There's always people. I get interested in my random rants when I'm out and about. Same story. Listen to those seagulls. Now that's obviously Blackpool Tower. I'm sure, in its heyday, it was a very impressive structure. It still kind of is. It's not big like the Eiffel Tower, but it's still big. There's another relic there, HMV. You gotta get up to get down. You gotta get up to get down. Okay, let's zoom around. Let's do the quickest tour of um, Blackpool. Okay. Do you know what's really weird? Like, I'm gonna give you guys a sound and uh, a vibe I get here. Even just interacting with that guy who I got strange vibes off afterwards. <laughs> Na 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 
It's so fucking Doomer. All I'm getting right now is Darren Aronofsky. Requiem for a dream vibes. Coney Island, decay, degradation, no opportunities, collapse. There's Blackpool Pier. Let's get a bit closer. We'll do what we can before the traffic wardens come and breach me. Okay, the uh, Washington Monument there at the end. No, just the Nova Lakes. So we've got an Eiffel Tower, you've got a Washington Monument. What else have we got? We've got Brighton Pier, but it's Blackpool Pier. And we're around the front. So it's a nice red brick building to house the, to house the Blackpool Tower. There you see. And board police patrolling in front of me now in vans. And there's another police van down by the beach. Another quick look at that. Again. It feels about minus five with the wind chill. Ah, but let's go back to the car. Um, getting bad vibes from Blackpool, guys. I shouldn't visit two towns named Black something in two days. <sighs> After Blackburn, I should have gone to Preston or the Lake District or Sheffield or York or Leeds. But I've come to Blackpool. And I had to deviate via Kirkham because I ran out of fuel. Well, it didn't run out, but I was like, oh shit. If I don't pull off, <laughs> if I don't pull out of the M55, I'm gonna run out. And uh, I don't pay for fuel in these expensive fucking side of the motorway places. I managed to find diesel for less than one pound 20 a liter, which uh, yeah, it's gone up in price quite a lot. So, international audience, this is Blackpool. There's two piers. There's the other pier there with the little ferris wheel. Trams! Look at that! They even have trams. But where are these people going? What is with... This is all over here. Oh my god, there's a Methodist church there. That's the... Uh, no. Anyway, thank you to the commenter, sad but mad lad, for the Methodist church architectural explanation. I like that. Right, one last little run down the drag. They've got these big bendy leaf things, which are, they're swaying. Let's get the other ones, look at them swaying. Day of the Triffids or what? Fucking hell, H.G. Wells, invading army. Whew. I am unnerved, I am unsettled. Even the sea looks bleak. Looks like a Lowry painting without the stick figures. And we're around the back of Coral Island. We're gonna go and have a look at this place. It's so, um, how do I put this? Yeah, it's so 20th century. It's very 20th century and it seems so redundant now. Blackpool Rock, of course. No, this shop's open. How is it open? Hi mate, you alright? God, he looked fun. He looked like a happy man. This is like uh, Disneyland, you know, like Pirates of the Caribbean. Fiberglass uh, fake buildings. Oh, friggin' hell, it's cold! There's Funland. Golden Mile Amusements. Jeez, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here, guys. Oh, my goodness. Buccaneer Family Restaurant. No longer accepting families. Okay, we'll end it on the big macaw. Macaw, macaw, macaw. Yeah, because my fingers are going to fall off from frostbite. Oh, you won't be long getting frostbite. So if the 20th century was a big, fat, juicy caterpillar of growth, of population explosion, of opportunity, we are currently in the cocoon and we have no idea what the butterfly or moth that comes out the other end is gonna be like. But one thing I promise you, on my channel right here, 
I'm going to bring it to you, unedited, live, well, live, recorded, real. If you look over there, Winter Gardens, big, beautiful building. I think we caught it when we were near the Eiffel Tower, sorry, Blackpool Tower. And it's a big, I'd say, yeah, this looks very Alexandra Palace, Ali Pali, late 1800s, railway, let's give the public somewhere nice to go. And can you guess what they've turned it into, guys? Yeah, you can read the blue signs, can't you? Of course, it's a COVID-19 vaccination center. And if you come up, I need to do up my jacket. Hold on a second, I'm gonna cut. So as I was saying, 20th century, big bloated caterpillar, we're in the cocoon. We don't know what it's gonna turn into. But I'll bring you the footage from this channel. only. No walking. Guess how they, that's how they stop uh, people taking 20 vaccines, just to be sure. My mum calls me yesterday from Scotland and she's like, celebrate. I'm getting the vaccine today. Your dad's getting the vaccine tomorrow. I'm like, okay. Fair enough. So if you're displaying symptoms, no vaccine for you. Yeah, winter gardens, more eight, sorry, <laughs> late 1800s rather than mid 1800s, as I said, but again, it's all, uh... oh look, architecture, you like the back of the Marks and Spencer? Very Alexandra Palace. Same vibe, but I don't think this one's gonna burn down because it's a white brick, white tile. Don't know what building material that is. My viewers will know. My viewers know everything because there's thousands of you. Hive mind. <gasps> I thought that was Hitler from a distance. You'll see what I mean. From a distance, at the corner of your eye, it's Der Fuhrer. Okay, we're down a quiet side street here in Kirkham never too far away from the abandoned building, but all around um, Her Majesty's prison, Kirkham, there's these big, big posters. Obviously saying that there's cameras in operation. Now, this HMP Kirkham is an open prison, which is why I've come here. I've never seen or been to or even understand an open prison. Sounds like a contradiction in terms, isn't it? An open prison. A black white, a night daytime, an open prison. So the security around it, the fencing, is very reminiscent of an old army base. Old army base. Um, and uh, again, moss is growing on everything, as it does in the UK. And my theory about these big yellow signs, I mean, there's one on the side of a farm over there, is that People in open prisons get bored and they like drugs delivered just like everyone else. And because it's an open prison, I guess they're allowed to come outside to these little side streets and meet their dealer and buy their drugs. So I think, I think the um, organizers here are trying to discourage your local drug dealers driving up in the little Vauxhall courses and uh, selling the inmates drugs. Are they, are they even called inmates if they're an open prison? Anyway, I saw an existential sign in this bus shelter. Very existential. Well, that's not a farm. Looks like a cute farm. That's just part of HMB Kirkham. So if you come around this way, they have a farm shop here. That's lovely. They have a farm at the open prison. And you come around here, of course, the stay at home flag, or is it gay pride month? Is it, who knows? But if you look in there, that's the open prison. But I don't see any inmates walking around. I want to see men in orange jumpsuits 
picking flowers. I want to see men in orange jumpsuits playing Ring a Ring of Roses on the grass. But you don't see it. Now I'm guessing that building down there, the one with the terracotta roof, that's the main prison building. It's the biggest prison building and you can see some window units down there. It's sad because the security guard in the thing is on the um, it's on the phone. It's okay. Typical Prison Act 1952. Don't try and help them. Hey, here we go. Nazi dogs. Let's get my glove back on. Can't really do my touch screen with the glove. I was gonna do a nice speech, you know, let the Veach do the speech. Let the Veach make the speech. I'm gonna talk about freedom, the future, the past. But maybe I'm more effective if I just keep my mouth shut and you just look at me and look at the background. <sighs> okay, I had a look online. The farm shop is a Kirkham Prison initiative to turn the inmates into retailers. And also it must be depressing as hell being in prison, so if you can grow food and run a little shop, I'm sure that's good for everyone. Anyway, we're on the outside perimeter fence in the public. There's your open prison. It goes on, the complex is a bit bigger than just these buildings in the front. There's quite a bit going on. There's some other smaller buildings around the back, so. I don't think it's a big prison, and uh, let's discuss open open prisoner-ish issues for a second. So, who goes into an open prison? Well, I think in Britain, because we are an island, it's harder to hide. And if your crime isn't one of violence or incredible rage and passion, and you're not going to rip granny's heads off, if your crime is fraud or, you know, theft, or something else, something dishonest, but you're not violent, then you may end up in an open prison. If you're not considered a flight risk, if you've got really nowhere to go and no funds to hide, if you're not gonna do what, uh, what was his name? Carlos Ghost, the Lebanese-born Brazilian, good old Brazil, woohoo! Head of Nissan in Japan. What did the Lebanese head of Nissan in Japan do? He defrauded Nissan. Tens of millions of dollars stole it all. Him and his wife living the high life because his uh, six million dollar a year salary wasn't high enough. And of course, the smart Japanese authorities caught on to him. Who is this strange Brazilian man stealing all our Nippon money? So he was under house arrest <laughs> and he was the biggest flight risk of all. So, what did they do? Put armed, well not armed guards, put police guards. Police guards outside his house. Police guards in the driveway to his house. So anyone coming and going. So what did uh, Clever Ghost do? Is that how you pronounce his name? Ghost, as in Casper? Carlo, uh, something ghost. This is all off the top of my head, guys. So, you know, you could probably refute a few, a couple of details here. But he, um, he got a brass band to come in from somewhere, somewhere in the world. He's like, I must listen to this brass band. And as I'm under house arrest, I need the musicians to come into my house. And the sleepy Japanese guards, sleepy Japanese police did not look at the double bass case or the cello case or even the harp case. These are all big cases for musical instruments. And yeah, you can figure out the rest. He got snuck out of house arrest in a musical instrument case. He went aboard a private jet in a musical instrument case, and he came out in Beirut. You hear Beirut, it's a bit like Beirut these days. He came out in Beirut to a hero's welcome. Because you know one thing more important to your average person, something more important than a jurisprudence, is tribal loyalties. So it doesn't matter how much money he stole, the way the Lebanese saw it, he raided the Japanese island. 
he saw that rising sun and he saw dollar signs and he disappeared. So would the former head of Nissan be allowed into HMP Kirkham as an open prison? No. Okay guys, uh, this is the oldest structure I filmed so far on the recent architectural critique and walk and talks in various towns. We're in North Bolton, just north of Manchester. And this is Smith Hills, Smithles, Smithles Manor, Smithles Hall. And uh, are you catching the bent chimney? The leaning tower of pizza. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was looking at it and I said, oh, what a, what a kind of nice mock Tudor house. And then I got closer and I said, wow, this is old. So I did a bit of research and what you're looking at was built in the 14th and 15th centuries. I think the older bits around here. Yeah, it's been extended many times. But um, what you're looking at now, here we go. 14th century, Shakespeare time, guys. That's the 1300s this was built. Here's the chapel at the end. Can't have a country house without your own private church. What would the peasants think if you were praying in the same church as the peasants? But uh, look at here we go, here we go. Just imagine someone 700 years ago going through that doorway. Blows my mind. Oh, yeah. What's inside it? Yeah, please mind your head, it says. Look how small the doorways are for the hobbits. Hobbits in the good old days. Look at this one. That is old. See this wooden door? It probably precedes Christopher Columbus by 200 years. That's old wood. Here's the hall from the other side. There's the churchy bit. And uh, it is magnificent. I hear a river. Or a brook. Or a burn. Or a stream. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to go down there and have a look at that, aren't we? Look at it. Quite a lot of countryside type people around. It's a... Uh, Nice, you know, there's uh, not that kind of fevered madness of city energy. Here's the other side of the hall. For all the British viewers, European viewers, you're like, yawn, we see 700 year old buildings all the time. Let's have a look at these Shakespearean characters. Oh, Iago. Calm down, Othello, calm down. Inside. What guests? You're not allowed in. So according to the history of the place, it's been extended many times. And I think the oldest bit is that one. Then it's still old, but not as old. And this bit is a bit newer, I'd say 1700s, 1600s, 1700s. And finally, this end here, I would say 1800s. So, someone believed in this hall. Someone built on the traditions of the past. Having not met any of the previous architects from hundreds of years ago, they continued upon it. Hmm. What value is there in taking some big tradition from the past which has stood the test of time, seeing that it's falling apart, but instead of creating your own mansion, ideology, system, you just, you fix and you build upon the tried and tested methods from the past. It's very humbling. You're not trying to change the world. See what they did with architecture. They decided to reset it after World War II. 
and the brutalists and the modernists came in. Whereas this, this is the opposite of a reset. This is an ongoing work of the ages. I hope this house is still here in a thousand years. And my great, 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 great grandson with his eyeball retina iPhone 58 makes the same video that I'm making. We said we would have a look at the little Hobbit Mossy Bridge and we are going to have a look at the Little Hobbit Mossy Bridge. Try not to slip and die in the process, always a bonus. God damn it, I'm on the wrong angle here. And I'm wearing my Clark's City shoes. Oh, I never learn. Boots in the back of the car. And I'm wearing street shoes. Okay, here we go, guys. Just to give you a bit of Der Kontext. Ich liebe Der Kontext. There's a stream going down the hill. And uh, not the best angle, but uh, if I get any closer, I will, I will crash and burn, guys. Still on the ground here, that Smithles Hall. They've built a lot of uh, residential units on the ground. Aspen Close. Now, what is often the case with uh, the old aristocracy, it's very expensive to maintain all the staff and all the houses. So what you do is you sell little leasehold plots on your eternal freehold property, probably given to you by Henry V, Henry VI, maybe even Henry VIII. And so, you charge ground rent, maybe these are rental properties and you can actually, all of a sudden, boom, your aristocratic status is maintained, people get nice houses to live in, and everyone's happy. And there's some quite well-heeled residents here. In front of me is a G-Wagon G700 series. And as you can see on these houses, quite new, They've maintained the Tudor black and white style, and of course it's a. Oh, it's okay. Hiya. And of course this is a mock Tudor. Tudor essence. What does G700 mean on a G wagon? And that is Smithles, guys. Hi everyone, we're on New Chorley Road, or Chorley New Road. And behind me, it's as much a surprise to me as it may be to many of you, but in North Bolton, it's quite a posh area. It's very leafy, There's a lot of big houses. So obviously, your factory owners, they wouldn't live down in the smoggy city center with all the peasants. They'd live out in big houses, and where would they send their kids? To places like Bolton School behind me. It's a very nice building. Let's go and have a look. It's an independent, fee-paying, private school. Bolton School. There you go. Hello! Hello! See you later. See ya. Lovely. They're like, hey, Charlie. I was like, oh, do you know me? They're like, yeah, we know you. are YouTube. How are you doing? I was like, good. I said, oh, can I feel that? And then next thing you know, hey, wavy, wavy, wavy. So we're on the um, front lawn, front grounds for Bolton School. How would you describe the architecture of this building, guys? Neo-Gothic? Hints of Neo-Gothic, but simple, minimalist Neo-Gothic. With a bit of traditionalism, British traditionalism. If you come round, I think back in the day, like a lot of these things, it would have been like my school in Edinburgh, a boys school. Because, um, because yeah, there's no fucking good reason for a boys school. Okay, there's the quad. And this is the girls division quad. Quadrangle. I like the 
red sandstone. Let's come around to the churchy bit. There's always a churchy bit on these big fee paying schools. I should get a bit further away from the building, but I'll do it on the walk back. We'll do, it, we'll do a close up on this one. And then on the walk back, I'll, I'll give you the wide angle. It's a big school. And this isn't the only building. There's some more modern ones around the back that are similar to this as well. And uh, I'd guess this school's about 150 years old. The Riley Center, there's the modern ones, but they've maintained a bit of ode to, ode to limestone, sorry, sandstone. This is England, guys. It used to be, used to be England, it used to be nice. Well built and impressive and scholarly and uh, inspired feelings of, uh, Grandeur. Don't worry, you'll, you'll get the wide angle soon, guys. Just bear with me. It's just so sad. You know, it just reminds me again that my children aren't at school and they want to be at school. And, uh, even though children are not affected badly by this nonsense, they are they're forced to be the biggest victims of it. Because everyone else, anyone over 40, you've lived, you've been around the bush, you've grown a few gray hairs, you've got the man boobs. So you can kind of look the other way when you lose a year. But when you're six, when you're five, when you're eight, a year of no school, a year stuck at home, that's a cruel punishment, guys. That is house arrest. That is literally criminal incarceration for little kids. And they don't want to just... They don't want to just be at home all day, okay? They don't. That makes me angry. It makes me sad. Sad angry. Okay, we're at the end now. Seems to be some sort of big dinner hall. Yep, big dinner hall at the end. I can see the tables and benches in there. Now I'll give you the wide angle. We'll go across the road. Further out, we get the whole building. It says there the big white sign: "Change a life." Trained to teach maths or physics. Thank you, car letting me past. Who says chivalry is dead? I had a great math teacher in Edinburgh Academy and I had a great physics teacher. Any of my former classmates watch my videos? No, of course they don't. They all think I'm a weirdo, ostracized. He never followed the middle class career route. And no, I didn't. And I'm, you know, maybe I'm all the worse for it, but uh, None of my old school friends give a shit about me now or even care about anything to do with me. We'll end it there.